Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Peter Gracie Show. Tonight, I want to touch on a topic that has to do with Lucifer being cast out and the coming of Jesus and the end times. You have to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Because I want to make a correlation between different systems or movements or religion or how you may want to class it or class those types of understandings. According to Kabbalah, and I'm making reference since its energies are the basis of all creation, the tree of life can potentially be applied to any area of life, especially the inner world of man. The inner world of man. From the subconscious all the way to what the Kabbalists call the higher self. But the tree of life does not only speak of the origins of the physical universe out of the unimaginable, but also of man's place in the universe. Since man is invested with mind, consciousness in the Kabbalah is taught of as the fruit of the physical world, through whom the original infinite intelligence can experience and express itself as a finite energy. After the energy of creation has condensed into matter, it is thought to reverse its course back up the tree until it is once again united with its true nature, with its true nature, Keter, Thus, the Kabbalist seeks to know himself and the universe as an expression of God and to make the journey of the return by means of the stages charted by the spheres until he has come to the realization he sought. Now this is Kabbalah speaking on the tree of life. Keter is where you go to reunite with infinite intelligence. Keter is where you go to reunite with God. This is the highest point. This is infinite light. This is the highest point in Kabbalah. Now, I want to make reference. I want to make reference to um to 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 when they talk about a war in heaven. Now, in the Catholic Encyclopedia, St. Michael, the Archangel, Frederick Howleck wrote, St. John speaks of the great conflict at the end of time, which reflects also the battle in heaven at the beginning of time. He added that Michael's name was the war cry of the good angels in the battle fought in heaven against the enemy and his followers. However, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that Revelation 12 concerns an actual event in the pre-mortal existence of man. The Book of Moses included in the LDS Standard Works canon referenced the war in heaven and Satan's origin as a fallen angel of light. A fallen angel of light. A fallen angel of light. Listen to the correlation. Keter, infinite light. Now here, we're talking about the book of Moses in the LDS, which talks about Satan's origin as a fallen angel of light. The concept of a war in heaven at the end of time became, became an addendum to the story of Satan's fall at the genesis of time. At the genesis of time. 
We're talking about the genesis of time, the beginning of time. A narrative which included Satan and the third of all heaven's angels. Evidence for this interpretation comes from the phrase, the dragon and his angels. The specific phrasing became paramount to the reinforcement of the notion that people associated angels, associated angels with the devil preceding the writing of Revelation. We have different ways of thinking of who or what Satan is or the devil is. If you go back to the origin of the word devil, it really means to devalue, to devalue, to devalue. So the Christian tradition has stories about angelic beings cast casted down from heaven by God, of, often presenting the punishment as inflicted in particular on Satan. As a result of this link and this motive with the cited passage of the book of Revelation, the casting of Satan down from heaven, down from heaven, Keter, infinite light. You, you see where I'm going with this? Which, which other versions of the motif present as an action of God himself has become att attributed to the archangel Michael at the conclusion of a war between two groups of angels of whom, because of the mention of the dragon still casting a third of the stars of heaven to the earth. One third are, suppo one third are supposed to have, been on, to have been on the side of Satan in spite of the fact that the casting down of the stars, which is Revelation 12, 4, is recounted as an occurrence, as, as occurring before the start of a war in heaven, which is Revelation 12, 7. So commentators have attributed Satan's rebellion to a number of motive, motives, all of which stem from his great pride, his great pride, his great pride. Follow me. His great pride, his ego, ego, the great pride, pride. Now, this is an interpretation of Revelation 12, 7 to 10 that, that, that I found. And this is also on a wiki site. Just, that's just one, that's one interpretation. But if you, if you put the correlation between the two, you're talking about Bible here. You're talking about the Christian Bible here. We 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 looked at the the reference also in the the LDS, and also we looked at reference in Kabbalah. Now let's look at the reference in in astrotheology, right? Astrotheology is gives us an an explanation of all the ages, the beginning of time. Here it comes again, the beginning of time, right? The genesis of time. It references the genesis of time, right? So each time we go over into a new age, we have to understand that this is a new age. It's a new time. It's a new understanding. It's a new way of everything. It's, it's, it's understanding that the fall of Satan from heaven, from, Ket from Keter, from Kabbalah, back to earth. So, when you look at the, 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 the Kabbalistic tree of life, and you see that Keter is, is, is where infinite light resides. This is the crown. This is the highest place you can be, right? And then you look at Malkut. Malkut is, is pretty much the, 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 the initial pure limitless energy um, what which has um, solidified into the physical universe. So therefore, in Malkut, we are man walking around. But we are an expression of infinite energy. We are all sons of God. This is what Jesus teaches us. We are all sons of God because we all have Keter, we all belong to Keter, and we are experiencing this, um, this physical universe. Now, the fall of Satan from heaven to earth, Keter to Malkut, 
we have a straight direct pathway each one of us to the creator there's only one creator and his job is absolute his job is to create his job is not to micromanage he is not gonna tell us this is wrong or this is right he already sent a messenger called Jesus to tell us which is what is wrong from what's right we don't he, the, the, the creator does not need to micromanage us we have a straight path and direct access to the creator however because we came from Keter and we came all the way down to Malkut we actually came into physical form we have to figure out a way how to get back to Keter if we want to make sure that we're living a full life to make sure that we're living we're actually living enjoying life experiencing this life to the fullest but this is one thing that gets us our ego our ego gets us and we can project our ego as as Satan because on our way back to Keter on our way back to heaven on our way back to infinite intelligence on our on our way back to see the great light from Malkut all the way back to Keter there's one thing that that hold us back and it's our ego here we go again his great pride Michael Lucifer's great pride the great pride of the one fallen from Keter to earth our ego is the devil it's here to devalue us to take away our value we don't need to go back to heaven to become one with God we need to stay down here as man just walking around on the earth because like Michael he was casted out of heaven onto earth this is where we belong according to Michael there's no going back so now we get conformed to the things of earth and therefore we, we're stuck here because of our ego because here come this word again pride because of our pride so if we don't understand and put together all these correlation between the Jewish Kabbalah, um, Kabbalah uh, the the Catholic explanation for things the book of Moses and all these things um, astro theology we we can never un truly understand where we're supposed to be now astro theology teaches us follow the man with the picture so in Luke 22 it says of the Last Supper then came and this is in um, Luke 22 7 then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed the Passover must be killed passing over Passover must be killed and he sent Peter and John saying go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat and they said unto him where will do that we prepare and he said unto them behold when you ent when ye are entered into the city there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water follow him into the house where he entereth in and ye shall say unto the good man of the house the master saith unto thee where is the guest chamber where i shall eat the passover with my disciples and he shall shew you a large upper room furnished a large upper 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 room there make ready and they went and found as he had said unto them and they made ready the passover and when the hour was and when the hour was come he sat down and the 12 apostles with him this is when everything is en as ended and he said unto them with this with desire i have desired to eat this passover with you before i suffer before i suffer before i suffer for i say unto you i will not eat 
more, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God, Kether, heaven, kingdom, kingdom, a nature, uh, sorry, sir, a community, a kingdom of God. And he took the cup, here comes the water, here comes the water, and gave thanks and said, take this, I divide it, um, uh, take it among yourselves and divide it amongst yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And he gave, that, gave it unto them saying, this is my body which I have given you. This is my body which I have given you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also take the cup after supper saying, this cup, this is now where we're going to talk about cups and pitcher and water. This cup is the new testament in my blood which I shed for you. The New Testament. The New Testament. This is where the water comes in. This is where the, the drinking comes in. This is where the man... It's, it's all about going now with pitcher of water. It's all about liquid. It's all about purity. Now, if you follow the ages, 2,160 years is the beginning of a new age. An age end... An age ended and a, and a new age begins. We have found ourselves in a beautiful place where we can now experience the, the change, the crossover of ages. We are not supposed to be going crazy over this. We have to understand that everything now is a reset, a reset of everything as we know it. We may not understand it. Don't think that someone is deliberately doing this. This has everything to do with the cosmos. It has everything to do with infinite intelligence. It has everything to do with the earth. This has everything to do with the way we think on a whole collectively. Satan is within us. 666, six, six, the mark of the beast as you see it in, your, in, in, in Revelation, which is scientific terms for carbon, for man, the build up of man. Do not look outside for a Satan or a heaven or a, or a hell. It's within us. The war is within us. The war is on the journey from Malkut back to Kether, on the journey from earth back to heaven, it's on the journey. It's the fight is on the journey, but it's within us. It's our ego versus the pure us, the higher self who will say to you, this is wrong or this is right. And you still go against it because you have created a personality that you have to hold on to as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a, as a policeman, as a soldier, as an actor, as a singer. You, you've created these personalities and you can't let it go. And you live your life set on expectations because of the ego you've built. And because you're expecting these things, guess what happens? You find yourself being disappointed. But how do you become disappointed? If you weren't expecting it in the first place, if it, if it did not happen, you would not be disappointed. So this is where your ego plays with you. And it holds you back. And it keeps you wanting more and more and more and more and more. But in reality, everything was already there. There's no season for good and bad. Good and bad does not exist. Do not let anyone tell you this is the season for things to happen. Everything has a season, right? But it's beyond us. The actions, the actions we take, are based on decisions. And this is what determine, determines where we go. It's not a season. The only season is what is with the universe, is how it make things happen. There's no season for us to think as how we should get back from Malku to Keter. We should always be thinking that way. And don't think you're doing anything good or you're doing anything bad. You're here to experience life. 
And all you need to do is experience life the way you feel like to experience life. But do not let the ego attach to you because that ego will drag you back. It will hold you down. When it's telling you that it's right, then you think that you're doing the right thing. And then you make a decision based on what your personality is. You have to let go of these personalities and always remember who you are. First, someone pure without conditioning to a hard drive. Without anything written to your hard drive, you have to get back to that pure form so you can walk from Malkut all the way back to Kether, all the way through the Sephiroth and the lanes of the Tree of Life. You have to build yourself back. You have to understand the teachings, the greatest commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself, because we're one and we need to understand these things. Because we are so focused on what the Bible says and what the Bible don't say. And we're taking these things so literal that we lose track of who we are. See, we have pastors and we have ministers and these, these guys are doctors and doctors in this and doctors in that. And all they did was to study a single book. When scholars from before, from before the Bible was written they were studying these things to make sure they they were they, they were reading scrolls they were writing markings on walls they were making things out of the out of the celestial bodies they they focused on so many different things scientifically and came up with these things and they figured out things and they handed it to us and we take this thing and we study this one thing but we don't go back and we study this one thing and they study the Bible. And all of a sudden they're a doctor. A doctor in what? The basic rule is love thy neighbor as thyself and you will be okay. But you have to understand the law of love. It's not a rule. It's a law. It is a law. Anything that's a commandment, the greatest commandment is love. And if you can't figure out how to love yourself first, you will always be controlled by that ego. You will always be controlled by that personality, by those masks you wear that you can't remove. So until you can understand that it's time to actually release the ego out of yourself and nail it to the cross, then you will understand what the crucifixion is. It's nailing that ego to the cross and watch it bleed. This is why Jesus nailed himself, the body, to the cross. Because that's not Jesus you're looking at. That's the, sol the solidif solidification of a form that came to earth to represent life. How we're supposed to live. To represent the creator. The creator is not man. The creator is not man. But Jesus walked as man and, and made sure we understand that we are nothing. You could be nailed to a cross, but that doesn't stop you. When you're nailed to the cross, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, the crucifixion, or when he was when he when he was risen on the third day, it's because who you're looking at the cross was not him. So therefore, we should look back at ourselves to understand that this is not us. Because what we're supposed to be focusing on is inside of us. Our bodies are operating every day and we don't even notice it. It's working. Where is that intelligence? This intelligence is so complex. We cannot understand it. But what we need to know is how do we get from Malkut back to Kether? Get away the ego. And when people tell you that you should live this way or live that way or you're good or you're bad, if someone tells you that person is bad, what they're telling you is that they are good. You cannot listen to people. You have to live your life. You're here to experience life. You're not supposed to be listening to anything anyone tells you. You should make decisions on your own. You should make pure decisions. And pure decision does not mean anything that people say is good or bad. It's what makes you want to experience life. But you know that. You're within yourself. So this energy is so made of love. You can love someone and don't even know it. 
because love as we know it on earth is our is our hormones hijacking our intelligence that is not love that is not love we have to get rid of our ego and nail it on the cross this is why today we're in such predicaments this is the end of time this is the beginning of aquarius this is the return of jesus jesus is here now as we speak this is the return follow the man with the picture we're at, we've entered into Aquarius, the new age, Aquarius, the man with the picture, where Jesus told his disciple, when I'm coming back, you will know by you following the man with the picture. 2,160 years has ended, and we are now out of the age of Pisces, the fish. And so now we enter into Aquarius. All the Jesus fish you used to see on the cars, those, those, those are all gone. That, that age is over. And this is why it's time for a reset. The entire planet is at a reset. Every country is now a country with virtual borders. It's time for everyone to do a reset. This is the age where 5G comes in. This is the age where technology rules. This is the age where artificial intelligence comes in and play a major role into part because this is a new age the age of technology the age of coming out the age of enlightenment this is the age of water this element this powerful element we have to understand these things this is a total reset of the entire planet people are going to speak in different speak differently act differently we don't even know how to touch each other anymore every time you touch someone it's with caution this is a total reset the way we're thinking is what drives us it's going to drive us down to the age of aquarius everything is changing not only that but if you don't want to believe what i'm saying think about this the entire cosmos includes the earth, the earth is a part of the universe. We are in, you can call it heaven if you want. We need to understand that we are part of the big picture. This earth is a part of the big picture. Also, if this was not true, how does the moon regulate the menstrual, the menstrual period um, cycles of a female? Without the moon, there's no menstrual cycles. So you, we can call it whatever you want. You can look at it wherever, whatever, however you want. But you have to agree that without those celestial bodies, this thing will not work. If the sun does not rise today, guess what? There's no life. That sun up there is the sun of God. God made that sun. That's God's sun. That's the sun of God. Now, I'm not saying you should go worship the sun, but that's the only pure energy left in the entire planet as we know it. The sun. They have diluted the water. They have messed up the air. They, they did everything to destroy us in a whole as a human being. Now we're facing global warming and all these foolishness. The only thing pure left is the sun. And it will begin with the sun and it will end with the sun. That sun is going nowhere. That means if we should burn, we're going to burn. But that's pure energy. That's pure energy. And he said, I am the shield. I am the, the shield. We must understand that this is the end of an age and the beginning of of an age we are now into aquarius a total reset there is nothing to worry about this this is a beautiful time a beautiful time to live and experience life our only purpose to experience this life get rid of get rid of our egos and nail it to the cross and watch it bleed and then you will get to get there you will understand that we're all from the same same flesh we are one we are a single entity and when god made female he, re he he pulled a rib out of adam and made a woman it's one person 
We're all connected. We're all one of the same energy, the same lifeline. We're, we're all using that same lifeline. But we have to know how to get back to Kether. We have to know how to get back to heaven. And we just have to experience life the way we should experience life. And not listen to our egos and understand how to remove those masks and put down those personalities when we're not, when we're not using it. Right now, in this time, on this great reset, no actors are higher than a normal person, as you may call it. Everyone is on the playing field. Prince Charles just contracted the coronavirus. He's a royal. So what? So what? Who cares who he is? The highest of the highest will become the lowest of the lowest because the first shall become the last and the last become the first. Listen, there is nothing higher than and nothing more plain of what's happening right now. Stop taking the Bible so literal and get back to yourself. Start focusing when you get up in the morning, spend, spend five minutes and listen to your heart beating and give reference. If you see a plant, give reference to the plant, give reference to the plant because it has life. We're here to experience life. You go out and speak to your plants and watch them flourish. But if you leave them outside, you don't take care of them. It, go, it gives you nothing. Take your egos, nail it to the cross and watch it bleed. And you will destroy the great evil. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure.